monsters are coming to the Midwest. Mammoth, mechanical behemoths, capable of crushing cars, trucks, or anything that gets in their way. Supercharged big blocks, producing over a thousand horsepower, that catapult these five-ton machines high in the air to the delight of thousands of enthusiastic four-wheel drive fans. Stay tuned as the monsters invade the Buckeye State, next on the Deuce. big crowd on hand anytime it's time for monster trucks believe me the crowd gets excited welcome ladies and gentlemen to canfield ohio and this special espn2 coverage of the summit truck style four-wheel jamboree nationals hello again everyone i am ted jones joining me later on in the show will be doc riley and this is all about monster truck racing now why do they call them monster trucks well take a look these are behemoths real monsters the biggest four-wheel drive creatures you've ever seen and they have become not just nationally famous but world famous they have huge big block engines inside of them they are definitely four-wheel drive they have both front and rear wheel steering specially constructed suspension systems and we'll get more into what a monster truck is and how they're constructed a little later in the show right now about the racing we're going to see a different kind of racing here today you see two monster trucks will line up but not side by side to drag race over cars no they're going to do what they call chicago style monster truck racing that is two of them will line up 180 degrees opposite each other they'll start in the idea as each truck is trying to catch the other one and in case he doesn't get him caught, the idea is to get back to the cars he started with and crushed initially before his competitor does. It's very, very different. You're really going to like it. Now, for more of what we can expect to see and details on these monster trucks, let's check in with Doc Riley. Thanks, Ted. What is a monster truck? Well, we've told you for years and years and years here on ESPN2. 66-inch tires and four-wheel drive are what monster trucks are all about. This is the Summit truck. Greg Adams has gotten out of Atlanta, Georgia, and you'll see another good characteristic, shocks on all four corners, and you don't skimp on anything right here. It's a 10,000-pound truck. There's no cubic inch limits, and these guys run alcohol in their engines. A supercharged engine right here, and you notice the engine sits back in the bed of the truck. They do that for weight distribution. Again, four-wheel drive all the way through. The other interesting fact about a monster truck is in order to, t to turn a monster truck, you use hydraulic steering right here. So a monster truck is able to corner a lot better. Let's take a look right now at the lineup. They've already qualified. We have eight trucks, and this is how they'll be paired up. Joining me in the booth right now, our expert analyst, Griff Allen. And Griff, the first truck up will be Mark Hall and the Raminator Dodge. Hall Brother Racing, legendary in the sport, one of the pioneers. If anybody can create some new technology to make monster trucks go fast, it's going to be Hall Brothers Racing. The Raminator also gets a, gets a lot of publicity, doing a lot of tours all throughout the year. See him put the power down, gets a good launch, as he's able to get game and take the first corner. Now, he's racing against Jeremy Ward in the American Dream. There you see Jeremy. Jeremy steps the back end out a little bit, and you can see that toggle switch controlled rear steering. Now remember that the front wheels are controlled by a steering wheel and the back wheel is controlled by that toggle switch with the thumb of the driver. And the trick is to get all four wheels lined up before you launch it. Good job, Mark. Mark Hall across first. He takes the first win in his first round of competition. We'll go back and take another look at it. Here's the start of his race and the first jump. You can see the front tire spinning as he comes over the uh, cars. And look at that suspension work, Grim. You know, that's a great chance to see the setup of Tim Hall that he put into the truck. See the toe on the front tires. That helps the truck turn. Look at the beautiful four-wheel drift. Here's the trick. Get it all lined up before you get in the sky. Good job. That's the driving part of Mark. That's how you win championships. Wow. Well, I tell you, right now we got a dust bowl going on here. Tim Hall, Tim the crew chief for the Raminator. Mark's sitting comfortably up there contemplating his next thought, your idea of what should happen in the next round. Well, hopefully we can get this Dodge Raminator back around there. Um, water in the track makes us a little nervous, you know, make it a little slippery. But we got these uh, tough trucks going to run here, so hopefully they'll uh, run that water in and then we'll be okay again because we got, we got plenty of power. This Dodge Hemi Magnum is... Uh, 
has got plenty of power for us. It's just a matter of getting it hooked up to, you know, down the track. But hopefully them good years will hold in there and we can, uh, we can get this, baby. We need a win really bad here. Our next pair coming up will be the Summit Truck Style, driven by Greg Adams. Doc showed you that truck a little bit earlier. Good start right there. He's going to be running against the wrap attack of Dave Rappage, and you'll see the Summit coming around the first turn. Now let's take a look at his competitor, Griff. Dave Rappage in the wrap attack. An eight-year veteran definitely knows how not to put a wheel long. He knows how to handle these big, bulky machines. Look at the wild ride by Adams there in the upper right-hand corner. Rappage, actually, I eat my words now as he puts the back end sideways and basically gives up the race. And that's all that Greg Adams needed. A great finish by the Summit Truck. He'll go in to the semifinals. Now let's take a look at what happened to the wrap attack with replay grip. It's all about weight transfer and chassis setup. As you hit the brakes coming into the corner, you unload the back end, you lose a little traction, and as he goes to put the power down, the friction is not there. The back end continues around, and your day is done. You can see he tried to get back in the race, but at that point in time, that's all that Adams needed. Doc has an interesting observation. You know, a lot of guys in between rounds will get out, do a once-over on their truck, take a look at some things, maybe make a few adjustments, or have their crew guys do it. But a lot of guys will get out of the cab. Greg Adams with the Summit Truck Style right stays in there and keeps focused on what he's going to do next. He knows that this ride is right and tight. And the only thing that is on his mind is getting by the next round. You see concentration right now on the driver of that Summit rig. Well, other guys that are concentrating are the big dog. We've got more monsters coming up next. This ESPN2 Speed World coverage of the Monster Truck Competition from Kenville, Ohio, is brought to you by ARP, manufacturer of aerospace quality fasteners, and by CompCam, the choice of the motorsports professional. Back in Canfield, Ohio, as we continue our coverage of the Summit Truck Style Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals, the Monster Patrol is approaching the starting line. But first, let's check in once again with Doc Riley. Monster trucks are kind of complicated beasts right here. One of the captains of the beast right here, the Black Stallion, is Mr. Mike Potters. Mike, we look at the rear of a monster truck. Tell me some of the adjustments you can make on the back end of this thing. Well, our truck's a little different. Our shocks are, uh, they'll actually travel 38 inches of travel, and we got what they call bypass tubes. We've had them on there for about 10 years now, and uh, we've actually been able to make just the, sh uh, the shock adjustments right at the track. Also, we've got the, the, an interesting sway bar. That's sway this bar. Here. Yeah, that's the sway bar. It's actually a torsion bar that goes across, and then it, it keeps the truck, when, it, when, it go, when you're going around a turn, it keeps it stable, because if you didn't have that, the truck would just want to lay over. You know, these trucks take a big pounding when they're in the air, 10,000 pounds of uh, force coming back down, and you've got some straps back here. You ever put those to use? Oh, every time we leave the ground, them straps actually hold the rear end from overextending, the shocks from overextending out, and uh, it keeps a lot of uh, a, a torque off the, off the shocks. And the... Uh, little bump bar right there yeah that's the bump stop actually when we come down on a real hard landing they'll actually come down and hit the axle i think one of the most uh, amazing things about a monster truck is the fact that you've got hydraulic rear steering yeah that, we're able to we're able to steer around the corners a lot easier and, and uh if we didn't have rear steering it'd be it'd be rough to get around in these trucks yeah we also have self-centering which we when we come around the turn we just let off our toggle switch and the rear will return back to center which we can get both hands back on the wheel and get down to business well, for those of you who know monster trucks, I can tell you one thing. Mike Potters puts this truck through its paces. All right, thank you very much, Doc. But meanwhile, as we said, the Monster Patrol was lining up. That's Kirk Dabney against big dog Doug Nolke. You know, Doug actually used to do mud racing, and he had a dream of becoming a monster truck driver. So nothing stopped him from building his own truck, and here he is. Fort Wayne's Monster Patrol, that's Kirk Dabney. He apparently is a little bit down on power this weekend, but he's trying to make up for it by driving very precise lines and staying on course. But maybe he's going to catch a break, because look at Doug Nolke as Big Dog is not going to be very big in this one. Speaking of a break, he broke. So it'll be an easy win for Kirk Dabney, the Monster Patrol. That precision driving you talked about, Griff, puts him into the next round solidly. Now let's take another look at what happened. Big Dog Ford came down hard on the front right. Watch the suspension compression. The body even contacts that agricultural industry-based tire. And you can blow a shock seal out in no time at all. You see it right there, the droopy nose. That upsets the handling characteristics of the truck, and there is no way to win a race there. Watch a couple hops and skips, and a day is done for Nolke. 
Doug Nolke, the big dog, what happened, man? All of a sudden, the engine, the dog, went quiet. I don't know. I got a fuel problem or something. That's what the, the crew's looking at now to see what exactly happened. I mean, I had all the power. I was feeling really good what was going on there. I thought I had a good run going. I got in that corner, and she just quit on me. I didn't know if the radio or somebody rolled over. I didn't know what was going on. Unfortunately, here we sit. We're going to work on her get her going for freestyle, though. You can guarantee you that. Now as the Black Stallion pulls into his starting position, Doc moves over to talk with our winner. Kurt Dabby, Monster Patrol man. Gotta love it, moving into another round. Hey, you know, we're kind of new at the Chicago-style racing, so we're really excited about going to the next round, and uh, we're just going to give it 100% out there. Hey, you told me that you hurt your foot a couple of, a couple of days ago. Are you going to be all right? Well, you know, really, the hardest thing is just uh, handling all the associated equipment with the monster truck. You know how much labor we do getting them ready for the race, and uh, really, once you're out there on the track, the adrenaline kicks in, and we don't even know it's hurt. I'll bet it does indeed. A good look right there at Mike Botters and the Black Stallion out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Good start, Griff. In fact, it's all about putting power to the ground, and that comes in chassis setup. And by the way, you, you got to see Botters in freestyle. He's going to be something else. Now John C. Sock, his opponent in sudden impact, gets ready to go over his second jump. Oh, almost too hard. He almost went nose first. In fact, there's a delicate balance about controlling the pitch of these monster trucks in the air. That may play out more in freestyle as we look at the final hit. We got a close race, Dad. Indeed we do, and Seesock barely wins it. Again, hitting really hard down on that nose, spinning out in victory. Let's take another look at that fantastic run. John knew that he needed to use a lot of throttle to win this one. Not enough throttle in the air to keep the nose up. What a landing, but it is a win. John Seesock right now inside working on it. I can tell you one thing. This guy is going to try everything he possibly can to get into that next round. This guy, a game competitor right here, working on transmission right now. And John has got his hands full right here looking. You know, there's uh, more moving parts on a monster truck than you would think with all the suspension wiring and uh, a 10,000-pound vehicle sitting about six feet off the ground. Uh, can maybe cause you some problems. But Seesock's been at this business a long time. He's in right now looking maybe at linkage. John, what are you working on? Um, we had Keyboard, we had a problem with transmission last night, and we changed the transmission, and something's wrong with the linkage. It's not really shifting the way it should be. Um, I'm hoping it's just a, out of adjustment. We're going to see what we can do here and try to get ready for the next round. We'll let John Seesaw go to work, and again, monster truck driver out of the seat with his crew getting hands on. All right, thank you very much, Doc. Speaking of getting ready for that next round, here's the way they'll line up in the semifinals. The Raminator will face the Summit Truck. The Monster Patrol will go up against the Sudden Impact. Now, as we go to break, we'll remind you, for all the latest news and notes from the world of motorsports, visit rpm.tsbn.com. We'll be back with more from Sandfield after this.